Hello indie game fans, as stated in a video a little while back, I wanted to talk about some older, classic, must-play indie games that still hold up, and what better opportunity than the Steam Winter Sale since older games do usually get a significant discount. We all know the classics by now, so I have a few unconventional picks that I believe are worth going back to. Let's begin with Zeo Drifter, a mini Metroidvania entry that I think looks fantastic, having simple but effective pixel art. You play as the Drifter, not that one, who explores a set of four planets after his ship was damaged, hoping to get parts required to make repairs. Like in my video talking about Omega Strike, it might not exactly be considered a Metroidvania since the game is split into distinct planets, but there are plenty of upgrades that unlock access to new areas with the requisite backtracking as well. It does also come to us from developer Renegade Kid, who you might know from Mutant Mutt's Deluxe, but is another casualty of indie game development since the studio closed in 2017, with one of the founders tragically passing away from cancer in 2018. So it's both a tribute to his legacy and that this is a great game, do pick this up. Some of you did not get the significance of the release of Jet the Far Shore earlier this year since it was the next game from developer Super Brothers marking a 9 year gap between that game and this Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery EP. This is one of the original games that kicked off the indie game trend being a gorgeous pixel art adventure game that does still hold up so if you don't already own this, do yourself a favour and get this at 80% off. This next title is perhaps not so indie since Might & Magic Clash of Heroes uses the Heroes of Might & Magic IP which is currently being held by Ubisoft, but they did engage developer Capybara Games who most recently made Below to make this Match 3 title back in 2011. We are talking about the HD version on Steam rather than the Nintendo DS version, although both are worth a play, where the Match 3 elements here are pretty good. This is one of my favourite Match 3 titles since the strategizing, special units and even campaign story are excellent, so get this even if you're not familiar with the HOMM series. The indie puzzle platformer is one of the most prolific and dare I say it, overdone genres in the space, so much so that they have kind of gone extinct in 2021. But we are of course talking about older titles, with Closure being the game of interest here. While this is monochrome and uses line art of all things, it is still a title that's worth a play, even if it is because the lead developer on this did go on to make The End Is Nine. This game is certainly from its time, for better or worse, so for a step back in time, this is one to get. Another very old title that's worth a play is Die Hard Dungeon, an action roguelite that self-describes as a real-time roguelike, so you can certainly see when and time this is from based on the terminology used. I like the pixel art and action with an interesting slot machine system for upgrades as well.
It is very Zelda inspired, based on the spinning sword attack and character designs, but certainly a curiosity worth checking out at 90% off, even if it is for the history lesson to see how far we have come from this to Hades. Hello, and thank you for your purchase. To ensure that your Domesticon product continues to operate efficiently, it will require regular maintenance. If it begins exhibiting any of the following dysfunctions, please return it to your nearest Domesticon depot for immediate recalibration. As always, Domesticon offers a complimentary zero deviation guarantee to ensure that all of our products can con con conform to protocol. There have been a number of moody sci-fi games with an existential or horror twist in the indie game space where one of the best is The Fall, a side-scrolling adventure game with some action elements where you play as the artificial intelligence of a combat suit having to protect the unconscious human pilot within the suit after they crash land on an alien planet. From the action, there's certainly some Blackthorn inspiration in this game, only sci-fi, with a narrative that is certainly worth experiencing. We all know about Super Meat Boy and Celeste when talking about precision platformers, so if you're looking for an alternative, may I suggest Phoenix Reach, one that, interestingly, is not a platformer at all. While you can jump and dash, continuously hitting the jump button will allow you to float and ascend, adding another dimension to this genre. There are optional collectibles in each level, which is expected for this genre, but it does have a unique spin which makes it worth a play. Let's kick off the top 3 with The Binding of Isaac 2011, the classic or vanilla version of the immensely popular action roguelite, being my first exposure to this game that's worth a play especially if you love Rebirth and have not played the original. I believe this runs on Flash, which gives the game a different feel, and while I do not get along with this game myself, this was my first exposure to it, so you might want to try it for the historical significance alone. I think that 10 years ago, developer Edna McMillan and Florian Himsel would have never expected the immense popularity of the series, such that they are essentially set for life, so it does showcase the indie game dream and how titles like this can be life-changing in more ways than one. Since we are talking about precision platformers when talking about Phoenix Rage, I do have to give another special mention to Stealth Bastard Deluxe, a pixel art entry where you play as a clone, having to sneak through a number of facilities. As with most stealth games, this adds an element of timing and patience, where you do need to avoid detection, but then move swiftly in the shadows as well. As such, it's a different type of platformer that is no less intense and challenging, and is truly underrated as compared to some of the more popular titles in the space. There's also a sequel that released in 2015, but as with most series worth a play, I would recommend that you start from the original. Our final must-play classic is FTL Faster Than Light, a roguelite simulation title that again is often credited with kicking off the indie game revolution way back when. This of course is the first commercial game from developer Subset Games, also known for the awesome turn-based tactics title Into the Breach, where FTL is still worth a play in 2021. You're managing a crew on board your ship, getting them to man various stations while fighting enemy ships, battling invaders who board your ship, while managing repairs, putting out fires and more, all in real time. 
in between the hectic combat sequences, you have to manage scarce resources to upgrade your ship while not running out of fuel, as well as to make tough decisions on random events. Where a lot of modern roguelite design, seen in games like Slay the Spire or One Step from Eden, can be traced somewhat back to this game, making it worth picking up, taking the number one spot. For more roguelites or sales picks, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.